You ever wonder what goes on at a funeral home behind closed doors, especially at night? Could be the makings of a good book, and in fact it is. One writer describes bodiless footsteps and many other strange happenings. Oh, it does sound like a good book, and it's just in time for Halloween. Author Rebecca Fisher has a new book. It is called All the Wrong Places, and some of it is actually based on her real experiences working and living in a mortuary. Rebecca joins us now. Welcome. Hey, thank you for having me. So this was a mortuary in North Carolina, and you worked there, and you also lived in the mortuary in an apartment. Yes, Northern California. Oh, Northern yeah. California. <laughs> West Coast, but yes, I did live there. Um, we were looking for a place to live and a job. We were newly married and I was expecting a baby shortly and we were kind of running low on options and this funeral home offered us both an apartment inside of the mortuary and a job. Had you had any experience doing this before? <laughs> I had no experience doing any of that before. Now, did you have any reservations or did you just jump right in and say, yeah, let's do this? Um, when he first told me, I said, no, that's not going to happen. Um, find another option. But um, we had no other options. And so in we moved and the adventure began. And, and so what happened in there? I mean, you go to work there and I imagine there's some things that you don't see every day working in a funeral home like that. Well, yeah, who sees that? You know, who sees an embalming room every day exactly. if you're not working there? But um, I didn't technically work there. I helped out after hours, you know, to get things done. And so I did simple tasks like filling the tissue boxes. That's really important. And um, collecting flower cards that have been sent to the families and cleaning. And eventually I worked my way into that embalming room. That took a long time and a lot of courage to step in there. And um, once through that door, you're face to face with the reality of death. And then you paint those faces and get them ready to go on their way. So the, the novel is based on your experiences, we said. What sort of things did you hear and see? Um, you know, for a while I stayed in our apartment. It was right off of the hallway of, you know, a small chapel and then down a ways is the embalming room. And so I stayed inside with the door locked for the first, you know, few months. <laughs> That's right, Vee, with the door locked. And, um, you know, occasionally when it was late at night and I knew everyone was out either picking up a new body or had gone home for the night, I would hear footsteps outside of my front door and um, kind of peek through and there's nobody there and you know go back and curl up on the couch and it would come again the footsteps and that spooked me pretty good <laughs> <laughs> i guess yeah. so did, did you talk to anybody did you talk to the owners or the people who, who manage the place about this um yeah the owner it was a family-owned business um he just kind of oh you know it was probably this or that um to explain it away but the people who worked there would say oh yeah there there are a lot of things that go on here for instance when the fog would roll in, which is frequent in San Francisco, mm -hmm. um, we would get a higher number of bodies and they called the fog the hand of death and they could predict when it came rolling in, we would have a busy week. Okay, so, you just gave me the yeah. goosebumps. <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine you and, and your daughter was born and, and she was born. I and brought her home to the funeral home and <laughs> she learned how to crawl and walk down that hallway. Um, luckily, she doesn't have any memory of that, but um, yeah, we, we did life there. So, you know, I really wanted to tell that story, that contrast of life and death and, you know, a lot of the things that it awakened in me. This is a novel. Is, is it scary? Or is it, it, has, just... it has scary moments. There's a lot of humor in it. You can't work in a place like that without a sense of humor. Or you're, you're not going to survive. And so, um, you know, things would happen while you're dressing a body. You know, an arm broke once. And after the shock, you, you have to laugh it off because otherwise it's just a horribly gruesome thing, you know. And um, So some of the yeah. things in the book are just, uh, mm -hmm. just about the industry and what goes on. There. Yeah, a lot of it's about the industry and, and the reality of death day to day. <laughs> yeah. Did, was that, was the fear and then just kind of the morbidity of the whole thing what scared you away or did you eventually leave for other circumstances? Um, both. Uh, that marriage at the time was falling apart. Um, you know, he was becoming very dark. I don't know if he was being influenced by whatever was going on there, but there was a lot going on there. I remember seeing shadows multiple times um, and being just scared to death. 
um, oh. walking down the hallway and there's a mirror and you can see yourself walking down the hallway and all of a sudden there's a light kind of following you or a shadow walking behind you in the reflection of the hearse that you're dusting off. And Sandra, I don't think we should read this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds like the, one of those novels that does keep you up at night. Rebecca, thank yeah. you so much. Good luck with the book. For more Thank about